Hi, this is John and welcome back to my 3D printing corner. Today I've got a mini review on the Prusa Mini. So let's get started and take a look. Got over a hundred hours on the machine so far and I want to go over a few prints and uh, show you what I found that uh, I don't like and what I do like. I've been busy printing on the Prusa Mini uh, about a week straight. Um, I've done a couple 24 hour prints. Uh, I've done some shorter prints. I've done some 18 hour prints. I've done PLA. Uh, ran a whole spool of a PETG through it as well. So here we have a bridging test, a 3D printer test, and it's got if you're not familiar with this, I'll put the link up on Thingiverse. And it's got a retraction test here, it's got a bridging test, and it's got an overhang test. And I probably should have printed this in white because the camera, my lighting is not perfect for stuff like this. But anyway, the, the bridging test is really, really came out quite well. I can get it just right. So right in here is the bridging test and it does different lengths. Right through here is the retraction test and there's no strings or anything. It's not perfect. It, it did mess up. You might be able to see right there on the, on the top it didn't form the cylinder perfectly. And same thing right here on this uh, square part. Now the actual the actual bridging did a lot better. I'm sorry, not the bridging, but the overhang test did a lot better than I thought it was going to do. And I even printed this in an orientation that was not the best direction for the stock cooling fan. So it came out, came out quite well. There's definitely room for improvement. This was using Prusa Slicer, uh, 1.5 millimeter or 0.15 millimeter layer height, the stock profile otherwise. Let's see if we can get some of the uh, text to show up on the camera. A little bit of ringing on the text. The camera is over exaggerating. My lights are not helping in here. And a little bit of a uh, problem down here on the first, right? Kind of in that area, the first couple layers. But really, really solid. I, I, was, I was expecting much worse from this, to be honest. Next I've got an Aztec Cube, and this is in PETG, really, really old, wet PETG that has not been dried in quite a long time, so it does have some stringing going on, and I really would not fault the stringing on here from the Prusa. Just this, this filament literally has been sitting out for two years. And so considering that the amount of stringing is, is not bad at all. And so that is the Aztec Cube. And I'll, I'll put a link to the, all these different uh, thingiverse. The Benchy Boat, now this is the stock Prusa G-Code that comes on the SD card. See if we can get. Not a perfect Benchy, but overall quite a good Benchy. Got some problems back here on the flagpole. And you can see some vertical banding here. 
And this is before I adjusted the belt tension. And you can see the machine right here. I am printing another Benchy to. And then we've got some problems going there. Let me see if I can find something to actually point with. So right in here you can see, see some flaws. And this particular area is pretty retraction heavy. And here looks pretty good. You can see the bridging was not perfect. It's drooping down a little bit. The top looks quite good. Now this Prusa G-code was uh, 0.15 millimeter. And this is a Craftbot PLA. And so I did also print it in the Prusa Mint Galaxy Black. And same thing, you can see some of the vertical banding. And I'm still inclined to think that's belt tension related. So, it actually did better on the Prusament than it did on the uh, the Craftbot PLA. Still some little minor, minor issues down here. First layer came out fine. Same problem on the uh, on the flagpole. A little bit of uh, the same thing that we see on the purple print. And then same thing with the overhang not being quite quite perfect. I was looking for my best Benchy ever, which came off my BLV printer. Unfortunately, I could not find it. I tend to give all my Benchies away to people. Here's a print off uh, an MK3. And you can st still see how the, uh, the, the banding is present on here. And a little bit of ringing. And there is some minor ringing on the benchy boat as well, but the ringing is, is, is... Let's see if we can get a good angle. Yeah, it's going to be hard to tell. There's, there's some minor ringing. So these are some screws that I printed. And the screw area themselves came out really well. The gluing fan did a good job. Even up here where it's quite thin. That came out quite well. Still, you can see the, the vertical banding. And then here is the screw part that actually goes onto it. That screws on without a problem. Good angle of the vertical banding. There we go. Now this uh, little bit of Z imperfection that you see wasn't the fault of the printer. It is how I've got the screws going on the inside of this and how I had the infill. So this is off my rail core, and same general settings, you can see there is some slight vertical banding, you can see some color differences where, where the, the cooling fan was kicking in. Now while it's harder to see when I feel both of these prints, the, the wall quality feels identical. And so that's what leads me to believe 
that what we're seeing here is infill related. And the Prusa actually did a better job on the screw than my real core did. The real core I didn't have the best setup for a cooling fan. And so you can see underneath that it's it's just not very pretty on the on the overhangs. Whereas again on the Prusa you can see the overhang look, looks quite good. This particular print was 18 hours while the nut version was 24 hours and I did print uh, two sets so let's put those to the side somebody had asked about an aircraft wing So this is a uh, this is again a really old PETG. It is a single outline print. And I think I did 2% infill just to, to give it some strength. But actually surprisingly quite strong. So in both directions it's actually I'm pretty surprised it's a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be for what little infill is in there. Be fun to print this out of a Centium PCTG because that is incredibly strong filament. I was actually looking for some, but I need to I need to reorder. Now, one thing I noticed with this print, and you might be able to see it down here at the bottom, it did start to pull away from the printer. When I was printing this, the temperature changed in the room. I didn't have the heater turned on, so the temperature changed almost 20 C and so it did warp but I'm not uh, not going to fault the printer on that okay so then we got some base mode prints Let's see if I can find a better camera angle here in this particular case we've got two different machines so we've got the Prusa Mini. So this one here is on the Prusa Mini. And quite pretty. Some ever so slight and you, you can only see it in a few places but every now and then you'll, you'll see where there's an extrusion line that that's not quite as consistent as the rest now this uh, this is on a rail core machine same filament and even on here you can see you can see the same uh, you've got an extrusion line that's not quite as clean as the rest. Um, both of these were printed at 0.2 millimeter. The rail core print overall is definitely cleaner.
this is the rail core for now, I'm sorry. The only way I can tell is by looking at the bottom. The rail core, I don't have a, a powder coated bed. Whereas on the Prusa print, it does have the powder coated bed. So there's some more Prusa prints in a different color. forget the color of this print, but uh, it was an older uh, PLA, something I've had lying around. I didn't even bother to dry it. And I think it might have been called Dragon's Metallic when this company's actually gone out of business that made this filament. But again, quite clean. So base prints, really good. Here's more of a opaque. Which I doubt the camera is going to pick it up properly. And strong, I can squeeze it without breaking it. So, base mode came out good. Now this is an Ender 3, and you can see some different artifacts coming off the Ender 3 printer right in here, and you'll see that throughout this Ender 3 print. So here we've got another one. There's kind of a good view of it. And this is a stock Ender 3 Pro. Still not a bad print, but definitely not as clean as the Prusa or the Real Core. Got a Benchy running, and on this Benchy that's going on the machine right now, I've adjusted the belt tension, so I want to see if we get anything different. And right now, yeah, it does look a little bit cleaner than uh, the two Benchies that we've got here already printed. But still quite quite close. I'm using uh, this is a polymaker, and I did dry it for 24 hours, giving it a good chance to see if we uh, get any differences anywhere. So on the machine itself, I ran. Okay, I ran some really old Maker Geeks. PLA that was around the time that Maker Geeks the consistency of the filament diameter was not perfect and so you can see I started getting a lot of grind through because it was having trouble pushing this down to the nozzle through the PTFE tube so you can see it kept trying. So this would have been uh, the part of the line that's going down to the nozzle. You can see a grind through there. Then you can see more grind through as it just got harder for it to push it through the, uh, the PTFE. So maybe switching the Capricorn tube would uh, help a little bit. I guess I can try that for another video. And the interesting thing is that I discovered, let's see if I can pick a camera and move it. Okay, so right in here we've got the extruder gear. 
And so what happened with it, when it started grinding through the filament that wasn't great, it started building up quite bad on the groove. And as that buildup got worse, the harder it was for it to actually push the filament through. So even when I switched filament, it was still having trouble. And so I did have to go in there and clean it. And so one thing I discovered is there's no way for down here on the bottom, there's, there's no way for any buildup to fall through. So I'm sure somebody on, on Thingiverse is going to take a look at that or in the Prusa printers community and, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see an extruder mod to, to help with that because I don't know how much room is in there for any buildup to collect and if that buildup will, will cause any future problems. So once, uh, once I did have that get stuck, it wouldn't retract by itself. So I did have to take this loose, the Bowden coupler, and then I was able to um, to get that out clear. Now this the same filament on my Flashforge machine was easily a 30 minute short on clog. On this, it was less than a minute to get to get the clog fixed, and it didn't actually clog in the extruder. It clogged in the PTFE tube itself. So it was easy to fix. I, it, it wasn't a big worry. At first, uh, when I first saw it happen, I panicked. I thought, oh no, I'm going to take everything apart. Wasn't looking forward to that, but thankfully, it was just the increased friction in the PTFE tube that, that was causing it to jam up and then eventually grinding through on the gear. So Z-Wobble, uh, this, this is pretty good. There, there is some movement, but honestly I'm putting more force on it to get any movement than you're going to ever see from this extruder. So, and who knows if uh, strengthening this will help. But as you can see, these bearings are huge. And there, there's, there's no play coming in there. So most of the play I found, we've got an aluminum bracket here. Oh, I can't even see my finger. So anyway, we've got a aluminum bracket here on the Z, but then on the bottom is plastic. And so that seems to be where a good deal of the play is coming from. So two things I've noted are on that. One cool feature I've discovered, when you first load the USB card, it immediately brings up on the screen the, the last print that you saved to that SD card. So you stick it in there and then you're able to hit play without having to go through the menu system and finding where that file was saved. have not tried any of the network features yet, so I'll get to that. Um, very little wear on the rod so far. Um, I have not had a jam on the actual hot end, only on the out of spec filament. Um, run up to 245C on the extruder, and again that was uh, PETG, and I ran the whole spool of that PETG without a problem. And that was, a particular PETG was a, atomic. No issues with the powder coated uh, bed. Uh, the prints are popping off really easily. So I don't know if this is uh, slightly different to the beds on my MK3, MK2.5. So this might be a finer texture than, than what I've got because my other sheets were uh, the sheets that had first come out 
and so they've got a much rougher texture. Overall quite pleased. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. Adjusting belt tension is quite easy. So we've got a screw here, to two screws here, and this adjusts your Y belt tension. And then up here, these two screws will adjust your X belt tension if it's too tight or too loose. So I was surprised, to, or happily surprised to find that, because my MK, uh, uh, MK2 series, MK2.5, it's much harder to adjust the belt tension. So this makes it really quite easy. I would uh, give it a 4 out of 5 right now. So I'll reevaluate it again in another 100 hours. Um, but yeah, happy. Uh, we're getting some good production prints out of it. We're getting some good plate prints out of it. Didn't honestly expect the printer to be this good out of the box. Was a little bit more worried about the part cooling solution. But after seeing the overhang test, the overhangs are quite good up until about 70 degrees, 75 degrees. And then even then it, it's really quite acceptable. The retraction test is really quite clean. Some some minor minor issues, but none of the stringing that you would have, you would expect to find. So, thanks for watching. Please ask any questions in the comments section. I will post the Thingiverse links in there. And uh, thank you so much. Got some more videos on the way. I've got that under three, tearing it apart putting in uh, a different a different hot end so thanks everybody